That tramp doesn't pass me the ball. That player doesn't give him the ball. The other questions his capacity to lead a team. And then there's that manager who plays him as a center forward. Oh, and don't even let him get started about the president. It's almost impossible to please Kylian Mbappe, but that's only one of the problems his haters have with him. This is how Mbappe became the world's most hated player. And spoiler alert, there are more than a handful of reasons. First things first, this video has nothing to do with Kylian Mbappe, the footballer. You don't have to know about or love the game to understand he's different, a generational talent, if not a timeless one. Kylian Mbappe is a World Cup winner, arguably the most dominant force Ligue 1 has ever seen, and a Champions League monster who's pretty much scoring at free will. The Frenchman could retire today, age 25, and it wouldn't be surprising to come across people who would still rave about him 25 years from now. But all that talent he possesses comes at a price, both literally and figuratively. And for some people, that price tag has gone beyond all bearing. Let's find out why. Who's your favorite superhero? Me. Who would have thought that the adorable little kid with Cristiano Ronaldo posters all around his room would one day be compared to him in terms of his ego? For so many people, CR7 is still the one to beat in that department, but Kylian Mbappe has proven time and time again that he too has a few tricks up his sleeve. When it comes to one of the most popular of the seven deadly sins, the people who suffered from Mbappe's vainglorious personality are not limited to the poor magician either. From rival fans to fellow players, anyone can be on the receiving end of Mbappe's pretty ego, and you don't have to take a deep dive into his career to see examples of it. This season alone, which is still far from being over, mind you, has more than enough examples of that ego at work. After settling for a 1-1 draw against Newcastle United at the Parc des Princes in the Champions League, Mbappe was understandably frustrated, and he was quicker than he is with the ball to judge the Magpies, before taking an honest look at his performance. It's frustrating because we dominated this team from start to finish. They had nothing. We knew it was their game to have nothing. It's us, the players. We need to kill the match and win comprehensively. Obviously, the Frenchman must have forgotten that the team whose plan is to have nothing had beaten his side 4-1 in England a few weeks earlier. This was the Champions League and the stakes were high. But Mbappe can take a dig at anyone, regardless of the competition, just like he did with Stade Brest fans not that long ago in Ligue 1. After winning the game 3-2 with a last-minute goal which he scored via the penalty spot, Mbappe was seen waving the number 3 with his fingers to Stade Brest supporters to their absolute disgust. When the financial disparity of the two sides is taken into account, Mbappe's behavior looks a little more out of touch. But he certainly didn't seem to think so. When a journalist questioned his behavior and said that it's not fitting for the captain of the French national team to do such things, Mbappe responded ironically with a tweet, well of course, and I should have even sang with them when they insulted my teammate. Some have never set foot on a football field regardless of the level. Exuding confidence and getting on the nerves of every single rival fan in the world, Mbappe's latest dig to date was right before a penalty kick, once again in a league earned clash, and this time it was Lille's keeper Lucas Chevalier who had to face the dark side of Mbappe. Before converting from the penalty spot, Mbappe casually slid a good luck to Chevalier, accompanied by a smirk telling the dirt keeper that he can't save it. All of these examples took place in the space of a few weeks, but they're far from being the only instances of Mbappe rubbing up his opponents the wrong way. England fans still remember him from laughing out loud at Harry Kane's terrible miss from the penalty spot during the World Cup. While Denzel Dumfries is probably still thinking about how belittling it was to see Mbappe mocking him. These are individual digs and they can be hurtful for sure. But bear in mind that Mbappe with a single sentence had managed to piss off an entire continent. Back when he said that South American football was not up to the level of European football and he had done so in an interview for a Brazilian TV channel, no less, talking about rubbing it in. But then again, we're talking about a man who publicly took a shot at his very own father for his football skills by tagging Ronaldo o fenomeno. Jokes aside, regardless of what rival fans or fellow players feel about him and his ego, Mbappe believes that there's nothing inherently wrong with this attitude, because as he said in his France football interview in the summer of 2023, it all stems from his incredible desire to win. It's really simple. I'm a competitor, and when I play, it's to win. And no matter who I play with, no matter what shirt I wear, no matter where I play, no matter the year, I'm never satisfied. I just want to win. I'll never be satisfied. People who he pissed off may think otherwise, but it's hard to deny the man has a ruthless mentality. But enough about his ego. 
a star since he was a teenager and among the most handsomely paid athletes in the world for quite some time, it would be ridiculous to think that Mbappe could be jealous. But that is exactly what so many people think about the Frenchman. And no, it has nothing to do with materialistic things. Chances are he could afford anything and everything. This is more about reputation and respect. Not that he doesn't have any, but because he thinks he doesn't have enough. Playing alongside what many believe to be the greatest player of all time, Lionel Messi, and among the top 10 players of his generation, Neymar, Mbappe made the headlines multiple times for his tantrums, like the one we all saw at the beginning of this episode. While it was never officially revealed to be true, Mbappe had a not-so-secret beef against his co-stars. Co-stars who were chipping away at Mbappe's goals and assist numbers, which didn't go all that well with the Frenchman. Remember the famous penalty gate scandal, where Neymar denied Mbappe the opportunity to take a second penalty kick against Montpellier in Liga? This was one of the most clear-cut examples of the power struggle between Mbappe and his teammate. Another situation was when Mbappe was required to play a central role in the attack, a phenomenon which is now known as hashtag pivot gang massively disturbed Mbappe, because it not only meant a dip in his numbers, but also him being overshadowed by Messi and Neymar, who were playing at their preferred positions instead. While it is undoubtedly difficult to get away from the shadow Messi or Neymar cast, their departure didn't mean an instant rise for Mbappe in the pecking order. At least that's what his teammates thought. At the beginning of this season, all the members of the squad came together to conduct an anonymous poll to decide the team's captain and vice-captains. Unfortunately for Mbappe and his fanbase, his teammates chose Marquinhos, Danilo and Kimpembe ahead of him. Mbappe had previously caused a stir in the season before this vote was conducted after he took the captain's armband from Marquinhos and put it on even though Presnel Kimpembe was also playing. The Frenchman's ability to lead his side with or without the captain's armband has been put into question a lot already, especially after the departure of Leo Messi and Neymar, which practically meant that he was now the one and only superstar of his team. That being said, the way he carried himself recently was once again the talk of the town, and it was for all the wrong reasons. As his side failed to get a win away at the Signal Iduna Park against Borussia Dortmund, with PSG settling for a draw. And at the end of the game, Mbappe almost totally lost it and scolded his teammates for all the world to see, most visibly Vitinha and Ashraf Hakimi. While some thought this was once again Mbappe, the competitor, who demands so much from himself and his teammates, others were not all that convinced, especially his compatriot and former Barcelona and Milan star Christophe Dugary, who fired off at Mbappe with both barrels. I saw a passive Mbappe. He only yelled at his teammates at the end to complain. I was very, very disappointed in his behavior. He must get it in his head that a leader must set an example and feel concerned. I remember Zizou, when you saw him try so hard, run so much, defend so much, you had to move. Zizou was a collective. He is an individualist. Talking about Zinedine Zidane, it's time we talk about the elephant in the room. Because when you mention Kylian Mbappe, Real Madrid always seems to be a part of the conversation. Kylian Mbappe has never been subtle about his desire to play for Real Madrid one day. Even before he became a pro, let alone the sensation that he is today, he was dreaming about playing at the Bernabeu. Legend has it that back when he was 10 years old, a family friend gifted the young Frenchman a replica model of the world-renowned stadium. And in response, the 10-year-old said something along the lines of, one day I'll invite you to the real Santiago Bernabeu as a VIP guest. Couple that with his unending and ongoing admiration for Cristiano Ronaldo, the emotional tie between him and the Spanish giants becomes even clearer. Real Madrid, too, was never indifferent to Mbappe. If his parents had let him leave France, he could have already become a legend of Los Blancos by now. Because back when he was only 14, Real Madrid wanted to sign him. The lesser-known interest grew with Mbappe and came to a point where the two looked destined for one another. And that's exactly when Mbappe grew the number of his haters astronomically, adding millions of Real Madrid fans to the mix. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. The very first opportunity for Real Madrid to move in for the teenager Mbappe broke down for a variety of reasons, mainly because of his family's desire for Mbappe to have a French education. 
but the Spanish Giants were captivated by him. So when he broke onto the scene in Monaco's Liga and title winning season, they came back. Rumor has it that Monaco was already on board for the move with a supposed 180 million euro offer for the 17 year old. But there was another person who needed to be on board and he was not. I'm talking about the young forward's father, Wilfred Mbappe, who was skeptical about the role Real Madrid would give to his son. His fear was that Real Madrid would turn him into a bench warmer and hinder his growth. So as the Spaniards were denied the opportunity to sign the up-and-coming star, PSG moved in and carved themselves out a deal where they loaned Mbappe for a year with the option to buy. That's how Mbappe joined PSG instead of the club of his dreams. But as we all know, the story, which has been playing out like a soap opera more than anything, was far from being over. Since joining PSG, Mbappe became a world champion, PSG's top scorer, one of the team's captains, and the captain of the French national team. And don't forget about all the silverware he helped PSG win along the way. So on paper, there must be no reason for fans not to just love this guy. But for all the reasons we talked about before, and for his ongoing desire to leave the club, Mbappe's loyalty and decision-making has been heavily criticized. On three different transfer windows, Mbappe came close to joining Los Marengues, and every single time, the deal fell flat at the very last minute. On one occasion, as weird as it sounds, even the French president stepped in and played a role for Mbappe to stay in the French capital. Today, while Madrid fans believe that the Frenchman used his very well-known interest in joining Real Madrid as leverage to get a better contract from PSG, and to be honest, the math sort of checks out, PSG fans believe that the club lost control over the matter and that Mbappe feels like he's already bigger than the club himself. Bizarrely, that was exactly what the club was trying to avoid in what they would call the new era, as explained by none other than club president Nasser El Khalifi, punishing Mbappe by leaving him out of the club's pre-season tour because he refused to sign a contract. The Blue and Reds president sounded firmer than ever. If he doesn't want to sign a new contract, the door is open. It's like that for him and everyone else. No one is bigger than the club, no player, not even me. It's very clear. Contrary to this very stern ultimatum, a few days later, Mbappe was reintegrated into the squad despite not signing an extension or a new contract. As things stand, Kylian Mbappe will be free to go wherever he desires come next summer. Although Real Madrid fans have previously chanted insults against the forward, they will probably be happier than ever if Fiorentina Perez manages to sign the Frenchman. As it was revealed back in the summer of 2022, after yet another failed attempt to land a transfer, Real Madrid has already offered a contract to Mbappe where he gets to keep 100% of his image rights, something the Frenchman's camp was insisted on, and a never-before-seen compromise made by the Spanish Giants. The chances are a similar contract would be waiting for Mbappe in the summer of 2024, but contrary to what has happened in this transfer saga before, this might be the very last chance for the Frenchman to realize his childhood dreams and join Real Madrid. Throughout this back and forth action between the two clubs, Mbappe was criticized for being greedy for more money and more power. But the fact that he strictly refused any offer from Saudi Arabia, despite the mind-blowing numbers on the table, proved that he's looking for, at least at this point in his career, something else. Both the PSG board and fans know what that something else is. Champions League glory. And if Mbappe has finally made up his mind that PSG won't be winning one shortly, he'll probably take his chances elsewhere, and probably at the very club that is historically the most successful at that very competition. Mbappe once said that playing for PSG is no easy task because it is a divisive club, and that might explain why he has so many haters. But if he is to move to Real Madrid, he must be aware that he won't be having the easiest times of his life. Regardless of what happens next in his tumultuous story with PSG, Kylian Mbappe has already put his name amongst the all-time greats of French football, thanks to a plethora of personal and team-based achievements. Only time will tell if he'll be able to win the hearts of all the people who love to hate him. With that out of the way, we're going to wrap up this episode, but before we do, we'd like to hear your thoughts on Mbappe. Do you think he deserves the criticism he so abundantly receives? Are you an Mbappe hater or a fan? Be sure to let us know, and if you've got time for more PSG-related drama, because there's no shortage of that, check out our episode on Neymar and how he flat-out destroyed his career. Anyways, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.